I am going to show you how to do uh, to hang some primary IV fluids. First, I'm gonna gather my supplies before I go in the room. Um, I'm gonna need my fluid, whatever that is. It usually comes in a, in a bag on the outside um, that you'll have to open and get this out. This is where we're using supplies here, so that's why I'm using this. Um, and your bag may look different. Uh, lots of IV bags may have different ports and things like that. Um, the, it may have a little hub to um, inject medication if needed. Uh, but you're gonna wanna inspect your bag, make sure it's um, not expired, make sure it's not cloudy, um, there's no leaks or anything like that. So I'm gonna check my bag before I, I bring that into my patient's room. Um, I'm gonna grab, um, this is a, an IV gravity set or a primary line. Um, if you're using a pump, which we're not gonna use a pump in this video, but if you're using a pump, your pump will have specific uh, tubing for that pump. So, um, but we're just using a kind of a generic primary uh, tubing. Um, I'm gonna grab some labels. So um, I have two here. One I'm gonna use actually in the next video, but I wanted to show you um, some facilities have policies on how often to change out your tubing. And so um, you probably can't see this, but this one is a 72 hour change and this is a 24 hour change. Um, so I'm gonna use the 72 hour change for my primary line. Um, and I'm gonna keep this one for our secondary line, but I need my label. I'm gonna label it um, with the date uh, I, I hung my, my line so that um, whoever's on the next shift, they'll know how long that line has been sitting there. I need an alcohol swab and then I, I need a flush to flush before I attach this to my patient. I wanna check my IV site first, um, make sure it doesn't look inflamed or infiltrated, looking for signs and symptoms of, of phlebitis. And when I flush it here in a minute, um, I'm gonna make sure it, it it's patent and, and there's no infiltration or anything like that. First thing, I'm gonna open my tubing. Oh, nope, I'm gonna do hand hygiene. I should have done that when I walked in the room. I'm gonna do hand hygiene. And I wanna show you a couple things on the tubing. Um, if you've never worked with IV tubing before, it usually comes with just this little paper tab, I'm gonna throw that away. Uh, there's a couple ports on it. You'll see there's a port down here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a port down here that will be closer to the patient. Um, and then there's one up here, and this is for our secondary fluids, which we'll do a little bit later. Um, there is a roller clamp down here, and this can be moved along, along the line wherever you wanna set that. And then there's also a slide clamp that just closes it off completely. The roller clamp is actually what we're gonna use to adjust the drip rate. Um, this is our drip chamber, uh, and when I spike the bag, we're gonna fill that halfway. This is also, um, we wanna make sure to leave some room in the top so that we can see the actual drip rate going. Um, this is our spike. You'll notice it's covered with a little cap. We're gonna keep that in place until we actually spike the bag. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually clamp my roller clamp closed before I, I spike my, my bag. Um, now this bag has already been spiked, um, so I need to be careful when I open it because it, it can go all over the place. Uh, bags usually have a little seal here when they're brand new. So when you, um, when you open it up out of the package and you take the tab off, it still shouldn't spill all over the place unless you were to like spike it and then undo it. But I do wanna be careful and make sure this isn't contaminated. And when I take this off, this isn't contaminated. We have to keep those clean. So very carefully, I'm gonna undo my fluids and then uncap that and I'm gonna spike my bag. Another thing that can happen is that sometimes the spike can go through the side of the bag. So we need to be really careful that, that we don't do that because then when you hang it up, it'll just go all over the floor. So um, that's common because that spike can be kind of sharp and it can go through the side of the bag. So just pay attention when you're, when you're spiking your bag that you're not going through the side. Now I'm gonna flip it over and my line is clamped, so nothing should be flowing. Um, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna fill this halfway full by squeezing. And you can see I've got, I've, I've filled that halfway full. If you fill it up too much, you can just flip it over and squeeze some back into the, into the bag. But this is where I'm gonna calculate my drip rate. So I need to uh, have that, that clear. Most caps also, um, 
you can prime through, meaning I can open this and it will prime on its own. Occasionally you may get um, tubing that you actually have to loosen this cap a little bit for it to prime. Um, so, so keep that in mind. If you're opening the clamp and it's not priming, maybe just loosen this cap a little bit and it, sh it, should, it should flow. So I'm gonna just open my clamp and I'm just making sure it's run all the way through, all the way to the end. And I have no air bubbles. So my line is primed. I have no air in the tubing. This is ready to go. So I'm gonna hang it. At this point, I'm gonna put my label on just so I don't forget. I'm gonna just put it up here. Some um, medications and fluids, you'll also put a label of what it is. Um, just so that you can look at it at a glance and see what, what that fluid is. So. Um, so anytime we hook up IV fluids, we have to flush the line first so that we know that it's patent. I'm gonna make sure my clamp here is unclamped. Um, that happens a lot where you'll go to, to push and it, it's not going and it's because you've forgotten to unclamp. I'm gonna get my hub here and I'm gonna clean that for 15 to 30 seconds. I'm gonna clean it really good. And then I, I've got a new flush here. I'm gonna just pop the cap. I'm keeping this clean and this clean. Just gonna flush it three to five mils. Make sure it's patent and it's flowing. They're not complaining of any pain. There's no um, swelling or, or infiltration. So I've got my three to five mils in. Now I'm gonna get this line ready. I can, I can set that down for just a second. I'm just gonna loosen this a little bit because these tend to be pretty tight. Undo this, not touching that. I'm going to flip my cap off here, connect, it's ready to go. This is open. My line is still closed. Um, so once you've done your calculations, you should know what your mils per hour are, are going to be and then or your drips per, per minute. I'm just going to adjust the roller clamp until I see this dripping um, and it should flow into your patient. If it's not dripping, you'll wanna check your line. Uh, I'm gonna ask my patient how she's doing, uh, make sure it's, it, it's not swelling or, or uh, causing pain. And that is how you hang primary fluids.